We're asked to solve this one using elimination, and the reason why we're using elimination on this particular one is because the uh, it's not solved for any variable, and it's not in slope-intercept form, so it's not going to be an easy one to graph. Uh, my x's are lined up, my y's are lined up, so I can use elimination. If I were to add these two together, unfortunately it wouldn't cross off my x's and it wouldn't cross off the y's. So I've got to look here and say, okay, well, which one do, um, do I want to get rid of? Uh, and I say, okay, well, and it, you can get rid of the y's. You can multiply the top one by a 7, if you will, and the bottom one by negative 2. That would work. Uh, for this particular one, I'm going to do my x's. I'm going to eliminate those first. But again, you could choose the other method if you wanted to. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to multiply this top equation here by 5. That will give me 15x squared. And I'll multiply the bottom equation here by negative 3. That'll give me negative 15x squared. And you could have multiplied the top one by negative 5 and the bottom one by positive 3. That works as well. So uh, just realize there are lots of options on that one. All right, so let's, let's take our two equations. These are the exact same equations that I have up here. I just kind of wrote them down here so that we'd have some more room. And let's do that now. I'm going to multiply the top one by 5, this equation, the first one, and equation number 2 here by negative 3. Okay, so if we do that, now, now I'm going to multiply 5 by each component here, not just the 3, not just the 2, everything up top. Okay, so I do that and I get my 15x squared, 10, 10y, and then 130. The bottom one I'm multiplying by negative 3, and again I do that to all parts, not just the first part, but all parts. Okay, so I've got that here. Now that I've got these two, I've got my x's can cancel, so I'm going to add those two together. Okay, so if I add them together, that will cancel out. This will give me a negative 11y here, and let's see, this will give me a 121. So I've got negative 11y equals 121. If I divide both sides by negative 11, my y value would be negative 11. So y is equal to negative 11. Okay, well that helps out quite a bit because if I know what y equals, I can find my x value. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to plug this value in to either one of these two equations to determine what my x value is. And you can choose either equation, it really doesn't matter. I chose the first one only because it's listed first, but you could have chose, chosen the second one and been just fine. So I go ahead and I do that, but instead of writing the y here, I know what y equals. y equals negative 11, so I'm going to plug that in. All right, now it's just a matter of simplifying and then solving this equation. So I've got 3x minus 22 equals 26. So that means I'm going to add 22 to both sides. That'll give me 3x squared equals 48. Okay, now I, I've still got to get my x all by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I find out that x, equal, x squared equals 16. If I take the square root of both sides, x would equal a positive and negative 4. Okay, it's not just one answer. There should be two answers. Either one will work. So plus or minus 4. Now, my answer on this one then, let's say I know y equals negative 11. Now, this is kind of a little bit different because x actually gives me two values. So I'll have to write two different ordered pairs, both of them with a y value of negative 11. Okay, so I've got negative 4 and negative 11, and positive 4 and negative 11. And the way I get that, my th these positive and negative 4s came right from here. And my y value is always the same, it's negative 11. So those are my y values. So my answer in this case is just negative 4 comma negative 11 comma 4 comma negative 11. That would be my final answer. And that's how you'll write it in the online system.